Righto Grillers, welcome back to the Backyard Grill. Um, my name is John Mattioli and today on another rare occasion I've been, got, uh, been given the green light to do another low and slow and an all day up. Um, so I'm going to repeat my last beef ribs video, a um, couple of reasons. I got a heap of people inbox me through Messenger um, regarding the heat, you know, all the, the offset plates. So I'm going to spend a bit of time outside and I'm going to show you how that is, is all set up and all, how it operates. Okay, um, this time we've got even a bigger one because last time it was that nice, it, it just it got demolished. It was the first time in our life that there was silence at the, at the dinner table. So I've got a, an extra piece, um, so it's a little bit bigger, a little bit leaner. Hang on, buddy. Um, so again, like I said the last time, with pork ribs, with beef ribs, so many different methods and recipes and uh, heat sources and spice rubs and do you smoke, do you not smoke, do you wrap them, do you spritz them, spritz them with what? So there's so many, there's never the same cook, there's so many um, different ways of doing it and I think that's the addiction to the barbecue for me because you just keep trying to get better at the same thing or just you know, keep repeating. Uh, sorry, not repeating the same thing and just you know, keep mucking around and, and that's how I learnt and that's how I hopefully inspire someone to keep giving it a crack and you know, help them out as well with some basics. Um, a lot of people get scared with these big low and slows, although if you, can, if you can sort out your heat and you can control your heat and you've got that part sorted out, this does itself. you just got to babysit it along the way, so really it's, it's, not, it's not as hard as what people think, okay? Alright, so... Today's method, exactly the same as last time. Straight through cook, I reckon this one about six to seven hours. No wrapping, only to rest. So we're gonna wrap it and rest it for one hour. So same again, what we're gonna do, salt, pepper mix. All right, nice amount. Give it a, give it a good hit so you, you um, get a nice bark. Don't forget, always do the sides. All right, we'll put your glove on. All right. Really give it a good good coat of salt and pepper. Okay, a lot of people just do that, or a lot of people just do a rub. Again, I've done many of different ones, and I seem to like this one the most, so I'm just gonna keep repeating it for me. At this stage, you guys can do anything you want, just salt and pepper, just meat or just rub, whatever you want to do. Um, today I'm going to do a little bit of a mixture on both. So salt, pepper, this is barbecue 101. So it's just a little sprinkle just to get... No. Okay, just a little sprinkle. Again, like I said last time, a lot of people at this stage now really give this a full coat. I'm just giving it a little... Just a little sprinkle, just to get that extra taste. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Membrane's been pulled off the back. Um, I don't really fuss too much about seasoning the back because, you know, I'm not really gonna, it's just copying a bit as I turn it. So we're just gonna give that a nice pat. Okay, now we're gonna leave this here for, again, I usually do it all the time with my meat. So I get all this sorted, then I go and sort out outside, you know, get all that stuff ready. So that's gonna sit now for an hour. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So I'm going to bring you outside in a sec and I'm going to show you this offset plate and the way that that's all set up and we'll go from there. So we'll see you in a sec. <laughs> Step two, kettle set up. Um, again, lots of methods, snake methods, offsets, all the rest of it. I like this one, uh, very controlled. So basically what we do, this is our offset plate here. Okay, dry drip pan. I don't use liquids in my drip pan. Okay, so we've got eight to 10 lit, lit briquettes in this corner. Then all the rest of here is just banked up unlit coals, okay? Now what we do is we put that like that, okay? Now what's gonna happen is these coals here are gonna slowly, slowly just catch on and keep catching on, all right? We regulate this at 280, 285. So what, what we do in that process, we, we, we set that up, we light eight to 10 briquettes, put it in, lid on, and then um, what you do, top vent open, bottom vent open, probe. This will then climb to 200 degrees. Once you're at 200 degrees, shut your bottom, shut your top to about a quarter. 
what will happen then will start to regulate to about 280, 290, 300. From then on, then you give it a slight adjustment and wait your 10, 15 minutes for it to settle back down. Okay, so we're gonna go for a temp of 280. Okay. What we're gonna do, smoking, cherry wood, apple wood, hickory, everything. I've been unbelievably surprised by that Banksia cone. Okay, I've used them now a couple of times. A lot of info on the Weber pages where people have used them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, really good. So what we're going to do also, we're going to plonk that into there, and that's going to smoke for two hours. Obviously, smoke. All right. Our meat now goes on over the tray. All right. Lid goes on now, for the first two hours we're not lifting. Okay, the lid stays on for two hours. Smoke do its thing. After that two hours, we're gonna take the lid off. Then we are going to, every hour on the hour, spritz with beef stock. You can spritz with whatever you please. I like the beef stock. So every hour, I won't film that. I'll just film it every couple hours just to keep the video down, okay? Um, only downside to this method here, which, I mean, this, this old kettle here, um, is a bit of a workhorse, so I'm not too fussed, but if you keep doing this time in, time out, you might end up getting some problems with the enamel here, okay? So if you want, you can either design or make something to protect that inner part of your, of your kettle. Other than that, if you've got a workhorse, don't let it worry, it doesn't worry me. Um, okay, so that's now going to sit for two hours and smoke. Um, so we'll be back after two hours and we'll show you then and we'll start spritzing. See you then. Okay, I'm sitting on 284. Fahrenheit. Now that's going to go to 285, 280, 285 and fluctuate a little bit from there. We've got our smoke going. We've got our vents a quarter. Another thing I forgot to say is put the vent opposite to the fire so the smoke flows over the meat. Okay, that's going to sit now for the next couple hours. And then we're going to lift up and start spritzing. Okay. We are at two hours, still sitting on 285, 286, as you just saw. Okay, starting to get some nice colour, still smoky. Now, I'm going to have my assistant just spray with some beef stock. Okay. That's it, cut it all over. Beautiful. Oh, I hope this tastes like the other one. It will, a bit more. Okay, we'll see you in a couple of hours for the next spritz. Okay folks, four hours in, around about the halfway mark. It's like an oven, this thing. It's been sitting on 285, 284. Okay, four hours in, about the halfway. Bark starting. I'm gonna get my assistant, I got my assistant back. I'm another assistant today. I'm gonna to give it a good spritz. Beautiful. Okay. Fuel's still good, we're all full. Okay. The bones should start protruding in the next hour or so. So, we'll see you in a couple of hours and catch you there. Okay, six hours. Have a look. Beautiful. The bones are starting to come out. Looking good. Still fueled up. I'm going to give my assistant give it one last spritz. This is probably the last one. Go for it. On the next hour, um, we'll start checking for temps. We're going to probably chase around the 200 mark, 195, 200. Um, not too fussed with the temperature, as long as the probe goes in nice and tender, you know, not, no resistance. And we'll see you in an hour. Okay, just clicked over eight hours. Pretty much done. I've hit a temp of about 192. A little bit low, but I'm going to rest it now. And that'll just creep up a little bit around the 200. The probe now has, um, as you can see, there's just no resistance. It's just soft. Beautiful, that's what we want. So, that can all come out now. And now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna wrap this.
Okay, that now is going to go in the SD. Lid goes on. That sits now for one hour. Once that one hour is up, we're going to unwrap it, cut it up, and we'll go from there. We'll see you soon. Done. Eight hours. Another marathon rib cook. Um, basically straight through cook this one as you saw last hour wrapped in foil so it's been resting for an hour unwrapped um, beautiful the smell of this is just you have no idea the smell that's coming off this is beautiful um, what I do want to say is like I say in a lot of my videos I don't put these videos out there to reinvent the wheel or um, say that this is the best way or the only way it's just the way that I have been doing it lately and it's been working and I've been really happy with it so really what I'm trying to do is target the, um, the guy or the girl that's just a bit scared to do a low and slow or something big like a brisket or you know, something that's long and big, low, low and slow. Um, so, I mean, don't be scared. The, the, the biggest and the best tip I reckon I can give you if, you if you want to give something like this a go on the kettle is you really need to master your heat source and temperature control, okay? which is not hard, people think it's hard, but it's not. Once you get that sorted out, it's basically babysitting. You just, it just basically goes on its own. Um, an example, I had my eight lit uh, briquettes and then the rest was all you know, unlit, okay? Once your temp comes up to 200 degrees, you then, from being open bottom and top, you then close your top and bottom to a quarter. What's gonna happen? That's gonna keep climbing and it'll sit maybe at 300 degrees. Now, if you're chasing a temp of 280, it's all, once, you, once that temperature stabilises at 301, 300, 301, 300, you know that's stabilised. From there on end, it's just a little micro touch top and bottom and then you wait your 10, 15 minutes and it'll slowly come down. Once you've got your desired temp, from there on end, it's basically just cook. It's on its own, it'll just run all day. That ran for 10 hours today without me touching it. Um, so, biggest tip I can really give you is to practice with your heat, heat source and heat temps and the rest will just come. All right, so basically look at that, that's just awesome. That. Still juicy, all juicy, beautiful smoke ring. Maybe a little bit too much. Um, so yeah, that's basically my spin on beef ribs. Um, give it a go, like I said, I, I, I really do hope to inspire people to give this a crack because to taste that is just incredible, it's beautiful. It'll just fall off the bone, it just peels apart. You know, it's just absolutely brilliant and it's good fun doing it. So again, I really do hope I help someone that wants to give this a crack, inspired someone to give it a crack. Um, so if you like these videos and they're helping you, like, share, subscribe, um, drop a comment if you need any tips or help that I can help you with. Um, so until then, we're gonna have a, good old feed. Um, so until the next one, happy grilling. See you then.